Yehova Malak, Ola Malamat, Yehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehova Edonai, Yehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Al Daat Yehova, El Emuna Yehova, Ibaslian Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basilios Basilian, Kai Kurios Kurio, Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Yehova Gadol, Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Kebura, El Elohim Israel Gadol Gadol Kebura, Derek Emuna Bakar Mishfat Shava, The Megalogai of Yahweh Lilion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives. To the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding the very purpose of our life, which is nothing but to walk with Him in spirit and in truth, always making our walk to be upright standards, so that it could be resulted in complete shalom for us. The very purpose what He has given when made a covenant with the people of the Israelites. In that sect, he chose the people called as Levi to teach and to make every believer presented before the presence of God the Father to be an offering acceptable as a smell that could be acceptable of a smoke of sacrifice. But yet, the people of the Levites or the Israelites particularly the prophets and the priests with whom he made this covenant, they rebelled against the Lord and they failed to perform the duty which he has given to them. They turned out to become kleptes, lastes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, and sharuras oriented minded ones, rather than waiting upon the Lord God and making them to hear the right word of truth. In today's Christendom, we are nowhere far better than the people of the Israelites. Wherewith we read, he feared with the fear, called us to pay reverence to Lord God. And thus he showed him the covenant of life and peace, calling him to walk with him, to make the word walk, known as halak, the manner of life, in peace and in equity, known as Misho'er, the word meant to say for us, Yasher, 
called to be upright straightforwardness and to be always in the presence of God according to his duty and turn many people from iniquity and make them a people ready for master's use this was the covenant what he made and he said in malachi 2:7 for the priest lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the lord his mouth for he is the malak meant to say the angel or messenger of lord god of hosts the reason why we talk this when the intermediary link between the body and the neck doesn't work out properly then the synchronization fails and today what a great privilege it is for us to be the pastor teacher in the presence of god the father in rightly dividing the word of truth and many of them they have come though they haven't been called as he said i haven't sent them at their own the present christendom pastor teachers to call themselves to be reverends and doctorates or bishops or any xyz idiotic title they keep apart from the title of the pastor teacher bona fide legitimate one given to us in the bible they have been not sent by the lord they have run for their own belly if they would have been sent they would have not made the commission of my lord what he said in matthew 28 18:20 as a great omission what we see in the present christendom the only one alphabet c is been removed from that commission and they have made it to become a great omission that's the fate of our present christendom though in the bible three times it has been used in the new testament as christians and as we come to that word disciple in isaiah chapter 18 verse 13 only this three times if it is been used as christians then how much more the word disciple is been used in the bible it has been used 269 times and in matthew 28:19 we have been stated go and make disciples of all the nations that's a strong mandate given for us and that mandate is not been exercised today in our pulpits and that's why we make from commission to omission and since they haven't been sent by the lord god if they have been sent by the lord god they would have performed the work of my christ as he said do you not know i should be in my father's business and he said he is going to take rest when once the work of the lord god is been done and he repeatedly mandated us to go on to be the people to walk before lord god as to teach 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 and to make disciples and the present christendom the harvest is plenty the laborers are few and we have been said to pray to god the father to send you shepherds after his own heart and the righteous labors because they could do the will of god accurately but yet this man who haven't been sent by the lord they have come to our pulpits having a great pain in our heart to look upon this great standards as ezra we read yesterday in chapter 9 verse 5 the heaviness wherewith he fell upon his knees you know the great men who fall upon the knees are the men who have that heaviness and the burden of the lord in ephesians 3 we find apostle paul In Luke 22:41 we find Christ Jesus our Lord of a God. And in Psalms 95:6 we have been said, "Come let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our maker." And in 2 Chronicles 6 we read Solomon kneeling down to pray. Looking upon the burden of this people, we have to kneel down in the presence of the Lord so that the name of my lord god shall not be blasphemed because it is not a demanding prayer it's a prayer of repentance in dust and ashes it's a prayer where we have to do the work like sackcloth not 
the way you can think you're really doing to appear before them to be great. In Revelation 11, 3, we find the two witnesses of the Lord who came back to prophesy in sackcloth all the days they were on this earth. That's the time now for us. The time to start a sackcloth ministry. The time to have this heaviness in our heart for the prayer which Ezra prays, kneeling down in the presence of the Lord. And then he continues from verse 6 to 10 or 15, the 10 verses. And he teaches us, it is not just to kneel and pray now, it is a time for us to kneel and preach and to inspect the things what God the Father is showing for us, these great things of the word of Lord God, which has been given for us now to preach the truth. In order to have peace in your life, you need to walk with both the presence of Lord God in great equity, not iniquity, but equity. The Hebrew word calls Mishai or, or Yashar. The things which Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date and eternity past, using the privacy of our priesthood to learn the things. Let's come back and do it with the great privacy of the priesthood of the prayer by confession of our sins and make it for the glory of God after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. What else we want to ask on this earth, o Lord? You have given to us the complete meaning, definition and true purpose of our life in Christ Jesus. Earlier we were not having a destiny to look, but now believing in Christ and looking your mind through thorough inspection. We have a destiny in our Lord, and that is nothing but to rightly divide the word of truth. By Kerusothan Lagan, not only the word, but also the mystery doctrine, and not only these both things, but making every believer to be presented, every man in perfect wisdom, every man by perfect teaching, and everyone making to look in all wisdom of yours, and that is what, according to the mighty power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in us. To this section, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us and make us to be fit for your work on this earth as long as we have breath in our nostrils. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name, we pray, Father. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name, we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The things for which a man strives on this earth or to use the word to make himself busy or occupied. When Jonah was asked in chapter 1 by those unbelieving men in the ship, when he was set to go to Nineveh, he took a ship to Tarshish. The people there, they asked him, What is your occupation, Kana? They asked him, What is your occupation? And he said, I am the prophet of the Yehovah Elohim, Lord of a God known as El Elyon Yehovah Elohim. Today as well, if we would ask the Christians in the present Christendom who are in the standards of professing Christians, what is your occupation? You know, today the world makes you to realize not only the people who are called to be believers or Christians, even unbelievers as well, they would say our number one occupation is to make money. They don't walk by faith. They don't wait upon the Lord that he is going to provide us. The first thing what he said, make peace with me and walk with me in uprightness. 
And that's what in the church age, every believer is called to be an ambassador for Christ. In the past dispensation, it was for the prophets to whom he has given this work. And the dispensation of the past, he said, the Levites would teach the word of God. In the present dispensation, he has made every believer to be the representation of truth. And that's what you should learn. Your primary occupation is to pay back to the Lord that which is due unto his name. When he said for us in Matthew chapter 10, saying that the very number of your hair is been counted. Can you find any man on this earth who has counted his own hairs? Or has he counted the hairs of his wife? Because people would love to enter into Guinness Book of World Records by performing something new. Could they say that I have counted the hairs? If you need to so, do, do so then, you should be very careful right from the day of your conception. The moment the kid has been delivered out, and from there on, not even to see that a single hair is fallen down. And you count them very carefully and very accurately. Do you think a man can count them? But the word of Lord God teaches to us that. The very hairs upon your head, I have counted them. And you haven't known the value of your thing wherewith I have chosen you in Christ. And he says, when I am capable of taking care of the word to use more specifically about the sparrows when he compares there, he teaches to us that they, the, the, in verse 29 of Matthew 10, and not two sparrows sold for a farthing. The word farthing is nothing but the name of a coin equal to the tenth part of a drachma. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. And then he says, The very hairs of your head are all numbered. The word numbered is called as arithmetics, what you derive the word in English. Arthitomio. And this arthitomio or arthitomio meant to say to count, to enumerate, to number. And he said, the indefinite number of yours is being counted and fixed by me. So he says, the very hairs of your, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And then what does he say? Commission for us. Fear you not. The word fear you meant to say phobio, not to be terrifying. Not therefore, that is what the Greek word oik, which meant to say a thousand times, to say no. Fear you not. Therefore, that is what he says, the conclusion, accordingly, consequently, being so, you, that is humas, that is the singular you, are of more value. The word value is nothing but diaphero. And the word diaphero meant to say, for us, a compound word taken from dia through, and the word for us, pharaoh meant to say, to carry the burden. The same thing we read in Rushing Mighty Wind of Acts 2. There also we read the word pharaoh, to carry the burden. Therefore it meant to say, you are better, you are surpassing the things what the world thinks better. You are more excellent, you are of a great value. He said, fear you not, for you offer more value than many sparrows. And that's what today people are not able to look. When Lord God the Father says that, without my permission, not even a single sparrow could be sold, then how much more I will be taking care of you and how much more the true life which has been given for us in the church age should be led by us so that our number one occupation is to look upon the mind of Christ and to do that which is the Lord's plan. The reason why I'm saying this, 
many people the way how they are occupying themselves to make money. If they would have occupied themselves in getting glory to God the Father, as the Bible says, give the things to Caesar, the things that are unto Caesar, and the things to God that are unto God. If they would have been paying the things which are to the world, if they are the things which they have to be paid to Christ every day by carrying their cross, joining as disciples, and growing up as grammatias, we wouldn't have found such iniquity among us. You would have not found, as the way the Bible records, the depravity of your nature called as Avon nature in the Hebrew. The main work of the pastor teacher today is to make you all to know what is your depravity. Because many men are happy today to think giving a great money to the church, coming weekly once to the church, attending the church monthly once in the communion table is enough. And that avon nature has been continued by such men who haven't been sent by the Lord God, who have come over here to become shepherds after the manner of men, not by the sent one of Lord God. If they have been sent by Lord God, they would have the heaviness of their heart and kneel down before the presence of the Lord. Besides confession, they would come to teach and make kneeling in the presence of Lord God every day, the right word of Lord God to be taught. By that we could easily understand these are the men who haven't been sent by the Lord. If they were been sent by the Lord, they would come to teach every day. They would make the things what the Bible demands. And they would put them back to have their account clear in the presence of the Lord so that they could have all the days of their life as the Bible records in Isaiah chapter 60 that true glory which has been intended for us to enjoy in Christ. You are really not able to realize what is the true life given for us. This true life where many people have lost. When Queen Sheba, she comes all the way to look and to learn what is this true life. When, though she was being told by others, we read that in Second Chronicles, particularly beginning in the standards of chapter 9. In Second Chronicles, you have these passages for us to learn. Because if you fail to realize these things, you will be tomorrow claiming yourself to be thinking, why at least I haven't made my number one business to go back and take in Bible doctrine. Why at least I haven't made my number one business to gathering up the word of the Lord God. Because, dear brethren, you will find over here why Lord God the Father compares Queen Sheba to stand against you in the judgment of Christ. Queen Sheba, what did she do? Here, first thing, she came to inquire about the dark sayings. We read that it is 2420 code. And we also read that in comparison to 2416 followed by 2421. If it is 2416, the true life which God the Father had made a covenant with the people of the Levites, when he says in Malachi 25, I made with them a covenant of life and peace. The word over there, what we read for life, is nothing but. Again, 2416, because that's what he said in Amos 3 7. I am going to reveal my secrets to them who are my servants, called as the prophets. So the true life has been taught today for us from the completed can of scripture by inspecting it thoroughly so that we could pluck out, we could break down, we could destroy and demolish those things which are lies and false, which do not match the great word of God, which is infallible and ignorant, but rather build them back by planting and building what the word of Lord God demands. That's what we have been called. 
That's what we have been said to examine. That's what we have been said to look very carefully. And now we have in us the true life. The true life where every believer today has to grow up to become Yusa beyond principle. The true life not only just to grow up and become Yusa beyond principle, but rather he has to execute that great godliness in Christ. And this true life, what has been stated for us, is very, very essential. And many people in the world, having half knowledge, they think what they're living is a true life of Yusuf beyond no. We, the church age believers, have this completed can of scripture, which has been said for us as a mystery doctrine. This is the true life, the true life which we have to learn according to the principle of Christ, the true life which has been given for us so that we could make up our lives according to the standards of doctrine. So you join as disciples, grow up as grammatias. You are joining to the Yusabian principle of the true spiritual life. From there on where you grow up, you grow up to become as Daulas, Desmios, to Christ. The first stage, Daulas, slaves. The second stage, again, Desmios, unto Christ. This is the true life. This true life has been revealed for us in the Bible and the work of the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher is to go back and look and teach and learn that so that he could teach again the same things and make you all to be reminding as long as in this tabernacle as Second Peter says for us, as long as I am in this tabernacle, it is my duty to get you to mind what are the things the Bible demands. The same thing over here coming to the case of Queen Sheba. She comes to ask many questions from her heart. The word what we read was 2420. The reason why I say you this, dear brethren, because 2416 says the true life, a life which should be green, flowing, flourishing, reviving, and active. This man sinned and he lost. Being born again in Christ, now he has to come back and live a life known as 2421 by first knowing about it, learning about it, and then making our life completely dependent upon it. So from 2416, the second stage will be 2417. And we compare this 2417 that man becomes a living soul. Whenever you find you are living, if you are not a believer in Christ, you think that you have soul in you, but for believers we have been stated, we need to have being born again in Christ, the soul and the spirit. So the first thing we born as a living soul. So from 2417, where do we come? We come to 2418, the next number called as Kaya. That is, you have been kept alive till you could come back and reach the status quo of godliness or God consciousness in your mind. That is 2418. And this 2418 will further lead you to become 2419. And this is very important. This is called as the origin of a man for what true life he has been designed and how he has to live on this earth like small 410 we read that is called as God. If Lord God would live through you, how he would live. Why he has called us to conform to the image of Christ. Why we have been predestined for that. Why we all need to become like the master. It is enough if a slave would become like master, he said. Why it is that Christ our Lord of our God says in Ephesians 4, to see that every believer comes to the catarismon process. That is, to reach its perfection, knowing your catarismos. What you have known, your predestination, from there you reach the target. That's what we have been said, your perfection, your completeness. Catariso and a catarismos, we read that long back. What you have to reach, how you have to come. So we have been stated to reach that. So 2419 gives you to understand it is a life that we have to live like Jehovah, our Lord of our God, and make every believer to understand that you have something far high, far greater than the world is in search of wisdom or light.
Therefore, we read yesterday in Isaiah chapter 60, who is our light? Everlasting light is Jehovah. We are reading about the first light, 215. For the sun and the moon, we refer to 216. But once when you have been come from 215 ore to 216 ore light, from earth to ore, there he says now, coming to verse number 21, 20, not 21, saying that Christ our Lord our God is our everlasting light. And then the days of your lamentation will be paid back. As long as we are not growing up to become grammatias, as long as we are not matching at least to become like Queen Sheba, the days of our Lord God's lamentation can never be paid back by us. Though he has given us the standards of this great Clear of Paul Tim of privileges of all time in the church age. The things what you enjoy in the church age are something far high, far greater. You can never understand these things until and unless you wake up and realize the privileges given to you are something far superior, far better, so that you could be occupied in the business of the Lord for what you have been called. You are really not able to understand your great privilege of calling in the church age. You are just passing down your life like an unbeliever who is alienated from the life of God and whose mind has been darkened. You are living such life in their ignorance what it was. So you are now. If you would wake up to realize what is your life, what is your privilege, you wouldn't have been the same. Because he has said for us to pay back the days of lamentation to Christ. Because he is going to pay us back the days of lamentation by the standards of this player of Paltimo privileges, then how much more today we need to pay back the days of our lamentation unto Christ. So, dear brethren, we look over here as he said now, 2419. Now we have come after believing in Christ so that you could understand your first earlier life, 2416, followed by to become like the way of life called as 410. And therefore now she comes to 2420 called. And now what is 2420 to ask the dark, obscure things? And do you know who will come and ask these things? The people who are zealous for Lord. The present Christendom is not being found by such people. You know, whenever a male is being compared to a female, in, her, in his glory or honor, particularly in my country, India, we claim women have mustaches, women can never have mustaches. What comparison you can make between a man and a female? She is a female, but we are males. And what comparison could you make? Because we know very well she is helpless, and we go to help her, and we talk in our proud, arrogant way to say that we are superior than female. But comparing over here for your dark, obscure questions, Christ our Lord our God puts the entire people to say that Queen Sheba will stand against you at the judgment seat of Christ. Do you know why? The reasons have been mentioned because she came to inquire her true life. When she has known her 2420 life, now she comes to understand the true life after believing in Christ called as Kaya, the life which has to be alive only for Christ. And thus she continues her life over here. So, getting back to 2420 code in Second Chronicles chapter 9, we read that, when she asked to prove, the word to prove, nothing but to tempt, to say, up to what extent is your God worth? The same thing in Isaiah 43, 9 we read. When Pontus Pilate asked the questions to Christ, what is the truth? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not respond, what is the truth? But long back we read in Isaiah 43, 9, let all the people come together, sit and discourse, let them think. And when we explain them the true path, the right path, then they will say, yes, this is the truth. The same thing over here, Queen Sheba as well, she is coming to prove. And if you are the children of light, if you are the children of the word of God, if you are 
holding for the light luminaries to shine in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations and if your tongue speaks that which is truth because we have a word for us in psalms when it has been said that first in malachi 2 the people should speak nothing but truth in psalms they say come let's speak wisdom and open up our mouth to talk the righteousness of god that's what our life should be wisdom and righteousness and then if you don't follow that he says they will be abiding judgment for you the same thing over here for us as well dear brother so what does your tongue talk what does your mouth talk can it reason the questions what has been asked or tempted queen sheba the same thing she does she had many questions and she came to prove and that many questions were the questions related to the true spiritual life which is not been lived today among us so he says for us that in verse number 1 of second chronicles 9 that she came to prove many had questions and coming to that she says that with a very great company and camels and that bear spices and gold in abundance precious stones when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him all that that was in her heart. Today, in order to know all that which is in your heart, have you communed through Bible doctrine or the Bible which is in your translations for you? Have you communed to find rest to your soul that you have known what is the purpose of your life? What is the purpose of this pandemic sicknesses? What is the purpose of such lawlessness in our lives in this world? What else you want on this earth? You want to have great prosperity? You want to have a great peace? Lord God says for us in Isaiah chapter 60 in verse 17, when you become brass to gold, from iron to silver, I will make the officers to be peace. I will make the executors to be righteousness among you. No violence shall come among you, but you will have the walls of salvation. You will have the gates of praise. And Lord our God will be our lasting light. Have you come to inquire all these things in the sight of the Lord God? Or are you still listening to this bona fide who are not bona fide but claim to be bona fide pastor teachers under the gimmicks and the tricks that have been run in our pulpits today you have been led in such a way you have been coming to such standards because you think what your pastor says is right and you go ahead but Queen Sheba did not do so you know what does she do in second verse and Solomon told her all her questions and there was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not the word told is nothing but Nagat if Solomon wouldn't have known how he would have told her the word Nagat is nothing but you learn and you learn and acquire and keep the information do you know how about this on this earth these people they live if there are two people talking about a topic Mr. A, Mr. B you know, always the man on this earth wants to prove that he has better knowledge. Then what about Mr. A has? So whenever you take a topic and tell them, they say that, what you have experienced, I know better than that. You know, they boast as if they know the things that have been great for them on this earth, what they have achieved. But concerning Christ, when it has been said, if ever you boast, you boast that you know the Lord, Mr. A, Mr. B or Mr. Still to Z, they do not know. That's the failure in our present Christendom, dear brother. Therefore, over here, Solomon taught, or Nagat, he knew the things of God because the wisdom was given, we read that in previous chapters. He claimed, Lord, give me wisdom. And by that he was pleased. He did not ask for riches, neither the life of the enemies. And he said, no king will stand against you all the days of this life on this earth. Neither there will be any king like you as long as you live on this earth. 
you know these things he promised and when he was been told or the questions what queen sheba might have had in her in her mind to ask everything was been cleared up and then coming to verse 3 when the queen of sheba had seen the wisdom of solomon and the houses that that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants the attendance of his ministers their apparel his cupbearers also and their apparel and his ascent which by which he went up into the house of the lord there was no spirit in her you haven't really seen what is the word of god so that you can still think you have some spirit in you the practices that the world is practicing in the present christendom do not match what the bible demands if you would look you would say the teachings of the heaven are like the, the teachings of the lord god are like the heaven and the practices what you are practicing by thinking that these are the teachings are exactly like the earth and you will find such kind of a great difference between the heaven and the earth the practices that have been practiced and what the teachings the word of lord god is teaching and then what does she do we find verse number 5 and she said to the king it was a true report which i heard in my own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom and the true report what they were giving we shall look now in verse 6 how be it i believed not their words today you are not able to find such people in the congregation like the congregation of berian church In Acts chapter 17, they have been recorded and put forth for us. They believed not the words of Apostle Paul while he was teaching. From Solomon, for example, comparing him to Jehovah, the pastor teachers or the now present Christendom pastor teachers, they come to give to the congregation the word. Now the standards are changed, isn't it? It should have been every day. but they come weekly ones and weekly ones the people what they inform you or the pastor teachers so called for you what they inform either by reverends or doctorates or any other title of clergy do you think you are happy with them a thirsty soul as we read that has a dear pantet for the lord god's will so you have to pant the word where we read it meant to say a mighty man a mighty man of god If you are really born again in Christ you would be like 410 code what we read to enquire the true life pertaining to that godliness and in Colossians 3:10 and 11 we find according to the image what he made us earlier we need to come back to such life today the people are not able to look upon such life neither they are able to understand upon this life so when you come to the real thirst of the lord god what you would enquire you would enquire the true life you would enquire the life that is pertaining to godliness you would enquire the life that what the word of lord god demands and yet you don't look upon such life you are going to end up so what did she do the people what they told her she said it was indeed a true report but i haven't believed it then what did she do now that's why we ask you to join as disciples and grow up as grammatias do you know what does a scribe do the scribe goes to write the word of lord god and when as a scribe you grow up when you write in the word of god when you go on to perform the mind of christ as we read in psalm 119 verses 96 through 98 you will have more wisdom than your teachers you will have great wisdom than your enemies because you are now in touch with the will of god now you are walking with great peace and equity before lord and now what she has done she did not believe the report though the report is true and what for she did not believe because she wanted something great to look so she says now how be it i believed not their words until i came and my eyes had seen it <laughs> where are you coming today to enquire to look upon the word of the lord god so what did she do she entered how she did not see with some other eyes and from where she has seen she has seen with her own eyes and we read in one of the prophets as well 
Look with your own eyes. Inspect with your own eyes. Not with the eyes of other men. As long as we fail to look with our own eyes, we don't believe. Have you ever seen with your own eyes the 66 books? Have you ever seen with your own eyes every verse of those 66 books? Have you ever read with your own eyes why there was a full stop, why there was a comma, why there was a conjunction? Have you ever seen with your own eyes what does it meant to say in the interlinear of the original languages of the scriptures? This will be the man for Lord God's repayment or repaying back the days of lamentations of Christ. The men who come back and look with their own eyes, though they have been said the reports, the report is true. At the one o'clock, there is something more than that what this man preaches. The people like the Berrian crowd. And that's the caliber because given to you as a believer in Christ, saying that you have been given this player of Baltimore privileges in the standards so that you could look under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you and constantly having that thirst, the way how that Samaritan woman, when she found Christ, she did she stop? She went and evangelized to the Samaritan place, isn't it? The same thing, when you shall find it, you will stop talking useless, worthless things, but you will make your mouth to open up in wisdom and you will make your tongue to talk the righteous judgments of Christ. But since you haven't seen it, you haven't looked upon it, you haven't understood upon it, you are just talking silly, useless, worthless things from your tongue, forgetting your occupation in the Lord for what you have been called. But Queen Sheba did not do so. She said, how be it, I believed not their words. You know, there will be men known us as well. If there would have been believers, there would have been more subscribers. If they would have believed the word which we are asking you to go up and carry your cross every day, follow my Christ. They say, our pastors haven't taught us like that. Our pastors haven't taught us to believe the original language of the scriptures. They say we are happy with six minutes or eight minutes of data, what we put every day in the internet. But they don't believe to carry their cross. You know, I have to teach you these things, dear brethren. In 1 Kings chapter 18, when Elijah is asking for that man to go and see, showing the prayer of contention for us, having to always to pray without ceasing for us. You know, till seven times he was being sent to go and see. And after the seventh time he sees a cloud like a hand. And little is enough for Christ to do great. Because that little will become much in the sight of the Lord. And that he acquired by faith. And then we read there. Two small fish and five loaves. Enough to make the great glory to the Lord. Everything was little. Even in that widow of Zarephath which has been recorded for us. Even she will stand for you against the judgment. And by faith she goes on to look. All here she fed them. Because of that flour and oil which was flowing them in them. Because of the faith with what she gave to Elijah. But little it's great in the sight of the Lord. So we learn there, still seven times, he couldn't see the next one coming up. In the same manner, kneeling down in the presence of Lord God and writing the Bible, or kneeling and reading the Bible seven times, you might have not looked to become a scribe. Because you do not understand the burden. Why it is now you would say, Lord, I have read seven times, what shall I do? He would guide you to become a scribe now. You have read, now go and write the Bible. But if you haven't passed the seven steps, you cannot look the glory of the Lord. In the same manner, the people, they are not able to go back and understand and consider what it is, O Lord, if I would go back and write and become a scribe, what glory is awaiting me, I have to say. If you don't have that zeal like this Queen Sheba, what she had, then that zeal or that glory which should be shown for you when you become a scribe, you would lose it. And meanwhile on this earth, 
You would be thinking you are doing great service to God by helping such and such pastors, by giving your salary, by giving your tithe, by giving X, Y, Z. Though the New Testament claims no tithe, yet you want to give tithes. And you say you are doing great works, but you haven't seen the glory what he wanted you to become as a scribe and see that. And that's what Matthew 13, 52 is all about. Joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias is like the kingdom of God, is such the kingdom of God. And joining as disciples, growing up as grammatias is what you read the Bible seven times. Until the seventh time you are not found, now you start to write, you will find out many great things as a scribe. As Ezra was already scribe to those people, you will find many great things as a scribe and you will learn many great things in the Lord. And the things what you have learned, what you have found, you would have your heart to be great joy than what this Queen Sheba has now. You know what does she say? She says that how be it, I believed not their words until I came and my eyes have inspected it, the word ra'a, not just to see, but inspected to perceive and to conceive and to look upon and to understand. And then she says, and behold, the one half of the greatness of the wisdom was not told me. One half. And today the pastors, how much they are hiding. They think they have their favorite subjects. They think they have their favorite topics. They think they can just continue weekly ones in the standards what they're going on. Tomorrow the same crowd will claim this pastor hasn't taught us complete counsel. It's a great burden for us to become a shepherd. In Acts chapter 20 we read that, verse 28 and following. The teachings which teach to us all the time to be aware to teach the complete counsel of Lord God. That's what Christ our Lord our God says in, in John 4, 34. He was being said that the meat is to do the will of God and to finish it, teleos, completely make perfect and finish it off. That's what he teaches, to reach its sense perfection. So being shepherds, our duty is to completely counsel and teach the word of Lord God accurately. From Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. But Queen Sheba claims over here that one half of the greatness, that is, not even to the middle, one half. Out of two, one has been taught and not even one half has been told clearly. So she says, one half of the greatness of thy wisdom. Do you know greatness called as marbeit? The great number of your wisdom was not told me. Do you know what is the word told? Nagat. Again, our old friend. Do you know what is this nagat? Until and unless you know, you cannot teach them. Therefore, in Jeremiah, we have this word for us to learn which teaches particularly saying about Malachi 2.6 in chapter 23. He says that, I have not sent these prophets, in verse 21, at their ran, I have not spoken to them at their prophesied. If they had stood in my counsel for the false reverence today who claim bishops who claim who claim apart from the legitimate title being a bona fide gift of the pastor teacher given unto us for them it goes to teach if you stand in the council and if you would cause the people to hear and obey the words of the Lord God and when they hear and obey what they should do they should have taken a U-turn from their evil ways the word turned in the Hebrew is shuv or shuv, complete U-turn from their evil ways and from their evil doings. The word doings is nothing but practice. The word evil is nothing but the things what we call as ra'a or, bo or badness or which is disagreeable and that is what they have made to be darak, the course of life. That's what he says in Malachi 2.6. My life with them was, my covenant with them was of a life and peace. 
I called them to walk before me in peace and in equity, that is uprightness, but they failed. So here, coming back to Jeremiah, we read, First, if they would look upon the council, the word council is soth, that is the great conversation or conversation, having to assemble yourself and teach the word of truth. So he stands there for them to teach this great word of truth known as Yasad, which is fixed, which is a firm foundation. And everyone should come for that fixed foundation in the Lord. So if they would have stood, the word stand again over here is nothing but Ahmad to remain, to endure, to endure in my counsel, which is a fixed one. And had caused my people to hear my words. The fixed counsel of the Lord God is to daily teach the word of God. Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. And the passage for us is John 1, 18 to Exegeomai. That's what it is. The fixed work of us is nothing but to daily teach the word of Lord God by daily giving them the Exegeomai standards. This is the only fixed counsel to go back and teach word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, not letting go even iota upon iota, but rather rightly dividing the word of truth and executing these great things in the mind of Christ. That's what our Lord's will is all about. That is, that's what we need to practice and perform. That's the fixed counsel of the Lord. And if you would make this fixed counsel, you would cause the people to hear the words of the Lord God and turn them from their evil ways. But the problem is the so-called reverence and doctorates today in the present Christendom for the great tragedy that has happened in our pulpits because they don't make every believer to be perfect and complete in all wisdom of Lord God. You know, the damage what they make to the church. They themselves haven't turned from their evil ways. Far less they would make the name of my Christ and the word of my Lord God to be heard for them and make them to turn from their evil ways and walk in the paths of Christ. You know, dear brethren, you are not able to realize so that we could call them that these are not been sent by the Lord. And those who have been not sent by the Lord, do you know what they do? They come back like the way how Queen Sheba claims over here in verse number 6. She says that, Howbeit I believed not their words, until I came and my eyes had seen it, and behold, the one half of the greatness of the wisdom was not told to me. Until and unless you come back as a scribe, until and unless you grow up as grammatias, you know why we ask you to grow up as grammatias? Because now you have a burden of the Lord to continue. Now you have to go and make disciples. What you have learned, what you have heard, what you have made known, you have to, what you have learned by the Lord God, you have to go and make known to others. So he said, it was not told me, for you exceedest the fame that I heard. You know what does she claim? She claims that you increase the fame, the word fame meant to say the report or the news, than what I heard. That meant to say what? The believers in the congregation, what they are listening to a fool known as the reverend and doctorate, when they would come back and look in the original exegesis, they would claim that what we have heard, we have heard little of your name and fame. You know, if we don't give proper honor to a man for his achievements while we are talking out or reading out what of thanks, you know, the man feels very bad. The same thing over here, what has been given for us right now through the church to learn the manifold wisdom of Christ, what we did in Ephesians 3. And if we don't make the congregation of the Lord God, to come back and look and learn and listen to this great entire counsel of the mind of Christ, would it not be as a great insult to my Christ? Because he intends us to know about him. He intends us to be acquainted with his character, with his name, with his fame. And he teaches to us, the very hairs of your head have been numbered, then how much more valuable you are to Christ. And why do you waste your time in the details of this life, occupying to make money? Be content in whatever state you are, said the word of God for us in Philippians 4. I have learned to be content, says Apostle Paul, so that we also can learn and be content. 
and learn to the purpose of the life of Lord's glory, not to waste our time. Given today the opportunity for you to make up a life to live according to the word of God, go and achieve it. It is not that you retire after certain days from your service and then you come to do the will of God. No, every day, though you give every day to Lord God the tithe of your, of your time of every day, purchasing the time, redeeming the time, the Kairos moments in this chronological time, yet it would not match because there is yet much for us to learn in the 66 books. So what is your occupation today? Tomorrow, like Queen Sheba, can you come? The way how this woman comes all the way to inquire, and she said, I haven't believed the report. Therefore I came myself by carrying all the presents and the gifts. Not that Moses Solomon needed those gifts or presents. But the things what she had in her heart to inquire and the man who revealed it. You know the Hebrew word Nagat plays a very important role. Over here in verse 6 also she claims what they told me was not even one half. The word over there told is again Nagat. Because they knew what they had in their mind and they told. Today as well, as the blind leads another blind without knowing exegesis or isagogics or categories from the original language of the scriptures, these people, they're trying to declare the word of God. And so it would be, they are telling to you what they have known. And what they have known doesn't even match to the name and fame of the glory of Jehovah. And that's the fate of our present Christendom, dear brother. In this 21st century of enlightenment, in the realm of your advanced technology, you are advancing to make everything in your fingertips. But you haven't advanced in teaching the word of God. You haven't advanced to go back and look in exegesis. You are still stuck up as if you have been rooted in the ground. So that you are not able to come back to look what is Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and teach. Do you not think you are capable of? Go back to the interlinear and look. Come back and take the standard, sta the standard teachings through strong code numbers. Why do you want to still stuck back or still be rooted in the ground rather than fixing your mind upon Christ? Though the world is marching ahead, though the technologies have been changed, but you don't make the people to look what is the truth because you haven't revealed on that. You haven't come to look on that. What it has been revealed to them, that's what they think it's correct and they come back and they make gimmicks. They make pastoral tricks. And what for they do? They don't make you all to have a firm fixed counsel of the Lord God to be at the rule in your church. They think if it is, if they think if the congregation would claim, have you done this so that I could become a scribe now? They will not become scribes or not write the word of God so that they would say others to write. And the people will ask, have you been a scribe? So they will say, why is it for us? Why we need to talk about scribes? Let's be the people who have been written upon our hearts, the word of God as written epistles, as Second Corinthians 3 teaches, and they never make them to become scribes because these idiotic morons won't be scribes to write. If they write, they would say others to write, but they don't write, therefore they don't teach. And that glory is gone from your life, that glory what you could see after seven times when you arise. Seven times Elijah said to him to go back and look, when the cloud could be formed. Seven times Elisha said to Naaman to go back and take bath in that river. Three times, four times would have come out. But he persisted till the seventh time. And then his skin was made new like a newborn baby, isn't it? Seven times when you read the Bible upon your knees, now you have been eligible to write the word of God upon your knees as a scribe. Then you will look the glory of a scribe. And if you fail to become seven times to kneel down and read the Bible first, then how would you come back to become to write the Bible? And that glory is gone, isn't it? In the same way over here, dear brethren, we look. Queen Sheba. She says what was been revealed to him and the things what they revealed unto us did not even match one part. Tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, it will be the same thing for you. Claiming again, 
I haven't heard about this doctrine. I haven't known about this doctrine. If not, I would have not gone to operate my heart. The Bible says, though your heart fails, that it is the glory of God which runs through you to keep you alive. That's why you know the very hairs of your head have been numbered and no man on this earth could have numbered their hairs. Could they? Far less they could look the glory of God. If not, they would have been entered in the Guinness book. The very number of your hairs, the arthotomio, or the arthematic principle, everything has been numbered, he said. And you're much more value than that, than the sparrows which could be sold for a fadlik. And your occupation, you're occupied in the world for making money to be number one priority, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, how to appear, how to impress men. You know, when we look upon the lives of these people, it's as good as fox also loves to appear like a tiger. So, tiger has some scales on her body. So, fox also goes to heat up her iron rod and puts that hot iron upon her body as well as a marks so that fox could appear like tiger now. That's what the life you're living today. The life to impress others. The life not to be content, not to make your number one priority to get what the word of Lord God is giving according to his gracious grace. When we fulfill his glory, when we fulfill his needs, no longer interested in such gracious life of Christ. No longer able to think to live such kind of a gracious way of life in Christ. No longer you are being qualified even to think But you love to have your rat race. A rat race to be looking better than others. A rat race to see that you are a, a, a big a billionaire or a millionaire so that you can have the people to be occupied on you. Well, what you will impress others? Your number one occupation is to go back in grace. Grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's your number one occupation in the Lord. That's your business. The main business for us as George Muller quotes, go and evangelize the world. Go and make disciples of all the nations, says the Bible, after evangelism. The great occupation, the great work of us to make other disciples, we need to grow up as Gramatias. The glory of Gramatias, you haven't looked until unless you're passed down to kneel and read at least seven times the Bible. As we read that in Ezekiel 42, isn't it? The purpose of it in Ezekiel 42, when we read it, says, When he ascended the seven steps, we have been given the sevenfold ministry of the Spirit, so that operating in the fear of the Lord, having the knowledge of the Lord, to become a mighty man, Gabor, and not only just to become a mighty man, to become have to counsel. That counsel gives you the standards of Bina, understanding that Bina gives you wisdom. And when you have all these six, the seventh one is the spirit of the wisdom of Lord God, which makes you to look the Holy Spirit of God. But you don't enlighten all the seven lamps. You just lamp one fear and you think you're operating in that. And what information you will get? The same thing what Queen Sheba claimed over here. I haven't even heard one half of their knowledge, one half of their honor, one half of their fame. The present Christendom has been led like that by foolish ones who reveal. But there are no women like Queen Sheba. Why we compare the word woman? Because you think you are men, you are great. And Lord God the Father, tomorrow the judgment seat of Christ, he keeps two women. Number one, widow of Zarephath in the ministry of Elijah. And then over here, this woman, Queen Sheba. How do you overcome about them? In order to overcome, today is a time for you to wake up, to make up your life for the teaching of the pastor teacher so that we could present every believer in Christ perfect and complete in the standards of your life to be smelled as a sacrifice to the Lord. That's what he said to put incense in Deuteronomy 33.10. The smell of sacrifice in the nostrils of Jehovah. You know, as the church pastor, to illustrate this as an example, if a friend of mine comes from a far country 
and he entirely depends upon me to show which is a good food, which is a good place, so that he could be having great joy with us. So we take him to such restaurant or such place, wherewith he could be happy. But for that first, me being a local one over here, I need to look and taste and see earlier what these pe pe places are or what this food is in the restaurant. If I don't smell or if I don't look, then I cannot make my friend who comes from a far country to look them, isn't it? The same thing happens, though your whole Lord our God knows everything what has been running in your hearts. He looks upon us as pastor teachers kept in charge to say, to look and to understand each and every member whom we need to present perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of Lord God's will. We get him to smell his life as an incense to the Lord. That's what we put for the Lord's smell. First, in order to put that for the Lord's smell, as a pastor teacher, first we are here to give account of them. We need to smell them. And that's what it is to burn incense to the Lord. First, we need to smell them. We need to make them perfect and complete so that we could say to Lord God, Father, in your grace which you have given to us in this ministry, we have made this man to be perfect and complete. And here you can have him to inspect once again. He will be a really delicious one for you. That's what we have that incense to be smelled for the Lord. And we cannot find the people like Queen Sheba to be given to the Lord as an incense. Who would diligently make all the way to look. I have been losing. If she wouldn't have come, she would have lost her entire life half of the fame because she heard only the half. But the remaining half should be heard by whom? By your own endurement, by your own persistence, by your own getting upon to look upon the word of Lord God as number one priority. The way how you spend your time in making money, you are not spending even 1% of the time in making the knowledge of Lord God to reign in your minds, to walk with Him in peace and iniquity. Therefore, you don't have that uprightness, the straightforwardness in the Lord. And you expect blessings from the Lord because of the grace pipeline that has been given for us, imputed righteousness. He is going to bless us periodically. But you think that blessing is because you have done something to the Lord and you wait upon that card again to be played. But you think it cannot. You think it can, but we know very well it cannot. Lord God spanks you. Because you cannot come up with gimmicks, you cannot come up with your tricks, you cannot come up with your holier than thou attitude, you cannot come up with your filthy rags or the Hebrew says ministers cloth deeds, holier than thou attitude. He demands in you doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. He said, peace is nothing but executing what the word of Lord God demands, what the Bible demands. If we don't execute what the Bible demands, then, dear brethren, there is no uprightness that you could think you're walking with the Lord. Therefore, dear brethren, repent, change your mind. At least like Queen Sheba, come back and carry your cross every day. Diligently ask God the Father to teach. And he knows very well to send shepherds after his own heart who shall feed you with complete counsel of the word of Lord God. As in Luke chapter 1, the prophecy about the birth of John the Baptist, we read, He makes ready a people prepared unto the Lord. And every believer is the people in that where they have to be prepared under the ministry of the pastor teacher in the present Christendom as a people ready for Lord God's work. And you have to excel greater than John the Baptist because you have been said you are greater born than John the Baptist. You have to be some far, far greater than Queen Sheba. But the sad part in our life, the days of your mourning, though Lord God says, when you become from copper to gold, from silver to iron, the days of your mourning shall be ended, said the Lord. 
But when will the days of my Lord's mourning will be ended on behalf of this man what he has made? Because he will not become like Queen Sheba, we know. You will not have faith enough in the Lord God to understand that you are more valuable than the very number of your hairs that have been counted, than the sparrows which have been sold for a furthling. You know, once again, you don't walk by faith, you walk by sight. Being standing in the presence of the Lord God face to face. After we die, how about our entrance? The one who is blind cannot see far off, he writes in Second Peter 1 9. Because he is ignorant and arrogant about the things pertaining to this use of your spiritual life. Because he doesn't have to his faith that which should be called as virtue through knowledge, temperance, patience, use of beyond, long suffering. And he doesn't have that word what we call as charity, love. And many of the people who don't match to meet the demands of the agape love of Lord God. It's really a pain on our heart to claim again and tell to again to tell to you the same. Much is given for us, much is expected from us, but we are making our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to say that. As the word says, get thee far away from me, you workers of iniquity. Depart from me, because you are not doing the will of the Lord, my God. What a sad thing it is for us. Though we have been said in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not only to teach the word, even the mystery doctrine, and make every believer perfect and complete in his sight, because the effectual power of his working in us, it is through the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and nothing else than that. Yet we forego it, and yet we look for the things which is not at all worthy, and we claim those things to be number one for us. As the word says in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, anything that you do on this earth will vanish off. The lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life will vanish off. But the one who does the will of Lord God the Father that alone abides. And what is the great will of Lord God the Father? Go and make disciples of all the nations. Instead of writing that alphabet C, if you just write commission, it will be as good as omission. And today the great commission of my Christ has become great omission in the midst of this people. Therefore, they perish like dung in their own sins. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Either like Queen Sheba you want to live and get back to the will of God. Or you want to make up your life like the standards who perished. In Luke chapter 17 when we read, the tower of Shiloh fell upon them. And he said, likewise, if you don't repent, even you will perish. Think about these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to walk with Him in peace and in great uprightness called as Mishai or equity in the presence of the Lord. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing women's being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mind is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest mind is to care Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season or out of season, because the Diamatrima witnesses where it have been called. The number one Diamatrima witnesses, indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Diamatrima witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren? You decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, as you have given us this life to be born as male, 
and you want the church to be in the standards of your righteous vigor and valor of Lord. Like Queen Sheba, the way all the things in her life, she came to inquire what was in her heart, and she found that even half of the things were not being told to her about your fame and glory. And greater than Solomon is here, you claim the Lord. And in the completed can of scripture, Father, you have given us your complete counsel, will, and guide for us, so that we could make up our lives to the complete glory of you on this earth. And yet, O oh Father, we are not even like that woman, Queen Sheba, but we are acting as if we are like eunuchs. Not even having the eunuch of a faith in Acts chapter 8, what, she, what he was, Ethiopian. But we are more worst than that, O oh Lord, to search you out diligently to believe thy words. Father, you have shown much grace upon us. We are ashamed to lift up our heads and pray unto thee. At O oh Lord, thy will be done in whatever manner you want. But only help us, O oh Lord, to see that from our lives there could be nothing blame or curse so that you could be ashamed of us to be called your children. Help us, Father, to strengthen up in the will of your calling and make us to realize to get number one business for you to get great glory on this earth by moving from glory to glory. Help those, O oh Lord, who are truly, truly teaching the word in exegesis to complete the word from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 and make this life worth to live only for Christ if ever we live and to die is profitable. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let him challenge us by this message. Amen.